Okay, so Pi News episode 70, and I'm still using my Pi 400 SSD 3D printed case, and I really love it. It's really, really nice. Uh, I've also got on the bottom, I've put some rubber feet, but rather than use the actual center bits, which I've already used for another build, uh, I've just got the outer bit, and it works fine. Uh, it doesn't move at all. It feels nice and sturdy, and I really, really like it. I've also been playing around with KDE Plasma, just sort of playing around with a lighter desktop option for people who aren't into the dark themes. Uh, and I've also changed my icon down the bottom here, uh, the start icon, uh, which I think looks really cool. And if I tap, you can see it's it's quite a nice looking uh, desktop environment and uh, you know all the folder icons and everything are pretty decent. But uh, I'm probably gonna add that to uh, my KDE build in the future. I'm not sure because Switching between them uh, isn't doesn't work like Twister worked. Uh, so Twister used to properly change everything with a bit of script, and uh, I don't necessarily have the skills for that. So uh, yeah, not sure whether to change to this uh, or whether I keep the one that I've already got. Anyway, let's get on with the news. So first up from TechCrunch, waiting for Raspberry Pi. Evan Upton talks supply constraints and demand shock. A love of queuing is still the order of the day for individual Pi buyers, but hopefully not for too much longer. So it talks about us having a frustrating time trying to get hold of a pie, and all the official resellers have just got out of stock everywhere. So numerous products are back ordered into late 2023. And it talks about how they're still supplying uh, a lot of the companies that were there right from the start and offer a lot of support to the Raspberry Pi. And in the article, it mentions that they're consistently building over 100,000 units a week. One answer I had uh, in a recent video was to use a original Raspberry Pi, which in the UK you can get for 15 pounds. And uh, actually for a lot of things will work absolutely fine. Talks about the high costs from some suppliers. I did get offered recently, and I'm not gonna say who from, uh, a Pi 4 8 gig in a kit but when I worked out how much the kit was costing for some very basic bits, I declined it just because I didn't want the backlash, to be honest. The Pi for eight gigs should sell for around about 80 pound or so. This kit was more than double that and the accessories were very basic. So yeah, I just thought not for me. And it mentions having a greater production capacity for manufacturing on 28 nanometer silicon, which is used in Pi 4 products. There's a lot more production capacity for that coming online in the next 12 months. And I think it will probably be the thing that brings our specific shortages to an end. He predicted I'm probably pretty comfortable with quarter two as a projected end date for Pi supply crunch. So the challenge for us now is how do we bring that into quarter one and how do we eke a couple of months out? How do we just squeeze a little? What levers can we pull to get that sort of return to growth? Of course, if we had a Pi 5 released, then a lot of people would start selling their older Pi 4s and that would have a good knock-on effect. So uh, it would drive the prices down. It's a long article, there's loads of information in there, so I'll put a link in the description. On the subject of getting a Raspberry Pi, this came up on Facebook. So this was, what, 2nd of October, just after the last Pi news I released. And uh, refurbished Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. So if you click on the link, frustratingly it takes you to an out of stock, but a good price for a refurbished Pi 4 Model B 8 gig, I think in this current climate. Uh, if you could get one for that, a lot of people would get them. Uh, but if we have a look at the comments, because I saw it, I think quite early on, and they're already out of stock. You can see here, why post when they're out of stock? Post is no good. Uh, John Russell asks uh, about what the refurbish means. Great question, you are correct. Okay, do take the units back into Sony UK where we manufacture the pies. They go back through the same test procedure as a new pie. If they pass, they are put back into sustainable packaging and released for sale. If they fail the test, they go into stringent e-waste process managed by Sony. And everything else says sold out, out of stock. Oh, and there's a two gig link here as well. Let's click on the two gig link. Again, out of stock, but you can see why they'd sell out at this price, £30.29. That's quite considerably cheaper than CEX, which I think is about £50 or £60 for a Pi 4 2 gig. So we'll keep watching. Nice photo from uh, the Raspberry Pi shop in Cambridge. Basically, you can, you can go into the Raspberry Pi shop in Cambridge if you live anywhere near there, and uh, it's one per customer, but they do have Pi 4s in stock and available. But sadly, no Pi 0 2 Ws. They seem to be the main one that you really can't get. Um, I mean, it's an incredible price and a great product. I love my Pi Zeros. Look at that, $160 on Amazon. And there will be a Pi pop-up store in London because Cambridge isn't isn't as easy to get to, but obviously there's you know there's a lot of people in London 
and uh, a lot of people will go there as well. So Friday the 28th and 29th of October at 58 Oxford Street in London. And you can even get some free gifts. And there's some Pi related merchandise in there. 2 gig, 4 gig and 8 gig Pi 4s will be in stock. So no restrictions on Raspberry Pi 400 and Raspberry Pi Pico, which is nice to see. Bit of software information here. Uh, so Diet Pi version 8.9. So this is a lightweight Debian based Linux distribution. You can see there's some major changes here. Uh, and if we go to their site, I've got some videos on Diet Pi, uh, which I've done in the past. Really like it, really nice, lightweight operating system, very configurable. And check out the link for downloads. So I showed my Pi 400 at the start. The, there's been updates on it, and uh, you can see I made a modified version of a couple of parts in this case. They allow the use of a 180 degree USB adapter to eliminate the need to run the USB SATA cable outside of the case, which is a nice upgrade. I don't mind the cable sticking out of mine because uh, there's other cables there anyway, but obviously if it's neater, it's neater, which is really impressive. Really nice to see more works being done on it. But also if we look at the images, I think it's this one. Yeah, there's some great photos here. So uh, if we zoom in, uh, so not this one, it's the one that shows, you can see various different cables sticking out of this Pi 400. This has got all sorts of modifications on top as well. Uh, you can see there's an audio output here for headphones. Looks like an ethernet cable uh, and the mouse going inside the device. Fully loaded Pi 400. And I thought, I thought this switch looked cool. So there's a power switch here as well. I guess it's power. So yeah, always interesting to see what people are doing to these builds and uh, 3D printing is just great fun. Really like this one on Reddit. It's not stupid if it works. Dropped nine degrees C. Uh, and so you can see it's uh, some sort of drinks container with some coins on the CPU, which is transferring the heat up into the drinks container. I'm sure it is very effective. And there's 186 comments, so I won't go through all of them, but it's not stupid until it slips and shorts something. Do you have a way of holding it in place? Already happened. <laughs> My solution is be very careful. Whatever works for you, and at least it's silent. Really like this image of an Amiga 1200 in red, uh, which has actually got inside it a Pi 3B+. Now, I'm pretty sure a Pi Amiga works on the Pi 3B+, but it works better on a Pi 4 but it might be that the user can't get hold of a Pi 4, um, but also you could maybe put a Pi 400 in there. So weeks of work, now proud to add this into my collection of computers. Kira board and A1200 keyboard. So it's running Amoebian emulator, and if we have a look inside, obviously it's quite a big unit, so there's plenty of room inside it. So HDMI on the back, audio jack on the back, power switch. There's a USB-B, I think that is, which is the one that you use in a printer and some original ports for the controller. And is that a micro USB socket? Oh yeah, of course it would be micro USB for a Pi 3B. I'm thinking of Pi 4. Yeah, it does look cool. Nice to have that original keyboard. The good keyboards in the Amiga. So this came up on Reddit, official reseller scalping Pies. Uh, just come across this today. Basically what's happening is our only official local reseller, RPI shop, is showing us out of stock on standalone Pi 4s. However, they stock lots of several kits under their own Zone Pi brand. These kits are just a Pi Plus, some other components in a box. In my example case, it's a Pi 4 4 gig, the official box power supply, two meter micro HDMI cable, and a 32 gig micro SD card. If you bought all this stuff, including the Pi alone from their store, it would cost you 101 euros. 67 euros for the Pi 4 and the rest for the accessories. However, of course, you can't do that because they don't stock the Pi on its own. They only stock it in the kit. The kit cost 137 euros. So the comet is claiming they're marking the price up around 30%. Yeah, if this is the case, it is, it is a shame. Um, I wish these official sellers had more stock to be able to sell it in a normal way. Uh, at the end of the day, I guess they are a business. So if they're struggling because they haven't got enough stock to sell, Maybe this is one of their ways of keeping afloat. Five inch UMPC uh, on Reddit again. This just looks cool. I'm not sure if I've covered this before or not. Uh, I, I like the look of the, the little keyboard with the trackpad above it. Uh, it really fits nicely in that uh, casing. And you can see very tightly fitted in there. Another Raspberry Pi 3B plus. Uh, lots of Raspberry Pi 3s being used. Still a great machine. I've never had one, but uh, I do remember when I first got a Pi 4, I wanted to get a Pi 3 because all of the software builds, all of the gaming, 
all of the emulators, everything was on Pi 3. And initially when a new one comes out, you have to wait for everything to be ported over and adapted to work with that new system. So maybe I can get one for a sensible price, I might get a Pi 3B+. Another cool build, this is from the uh, raspberrypi.com site, uh, Ceres One Portable a retro-inspired laptop, and there's quite a few images. Computers used to be enormous machines the size of entire rooms made exclusively for governments and industry. They became small enough to serve as fixtures inside the home. Eventually, somewhere in the 80s, they were small enough to become portable devices. Taking some mid-1980s portables as a point of inspiration, I looked at two specific models, the Dynamac and the Grid Compass, both of a certain sense of rarity and mystique to them. When I first looked at it, I thought they were toys. Uh, I thought it was an 80s toy, but it is actually uh, an original 80s computer and that looks like a full-size HDMI so I think it's another Pi 3. Ah, okay it is a retro toy computer luckily I discovered the talking whiz kid made by VTech in 1987. I thought I'd seen that earlier on yeah loads of it. oh yeah <laughs> you can see it's a toy now see the keyboard is all in straight lines so this is what it looked like before the conversion they experimented with a ThinkPad style track point uh, which was made by Pi Moroni. It didn't seem to work well with the Pi, so it's a Bluetooth mouse. It does look nice. I like this little red bun. Steve Parker sent me this link uh, in the comments. Is this the future of electric vehicle charging? Uh, basically, uh, in this video, there is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, where is it? Yeah, you can see it here just under his hand. Now, uh, it seems to be, I've seen this before in electric vehicle charge points. And uh, my neighbour across the road has got an electric vehicle charge point, so uh, I might have to go and have a look at midnight and uh, see if I can take it out. No, I'm joking, I would never do that, and I wouldn't condone anybody else doing it. But it's really, it's always cool to see pies used inside equipment. I'd love to take something apart one day and just find a pie in it. It'd be brilliant. I wonder if there's a list somewhere of, of what equipment has pies in and you can buy uh, you know, something off it. I wonder if they'd actually sell for cheaper on eBay certain equipment because they wouldn't know there was a pie in there, but the pie could be taken out of it. So this last story, basically a Raspberry Pi in a PlayStation 1 case, and this is from 2014, and it's an original Raspberry Pi, and uh, I only stumbled across this because I was doing some research into the original Pi, and you can see the headphone jack and the, uh, the video output there as well. You can see there's no CD drive system in there. Obviously you don't need it because the Pi is taking care of it. Although I've got a separate video where I ripped PlayStation games, original PlayStation games, to an ISO file using a Pi uh, and a, a separate CD drive. So there possibly could be a way of getting the optical drive to work with that. I mean, obviously this is ages ago. The all the circuitry involved in the original PlayStation and the Pi nice and neatly in there. And I don't think it goes through games and everything, but I just like the ingenuity of getting it in there and uh, and getting it to work. Although I didn't find PlayStation was that well emulated on the original Pi. Uh, I tried it in RetroPie in my video and I got Parappa the Rapper to work, but it wasn't 100%. Not like uh, my recent video with DuckStation where uh, it's running at two times resolution and runs brilliantly. Anyway, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.